last week on The Season. Hey, we got Javon! First check! You know, we had to bomb them up, you know what I'm saying? They may be a part of NWO, I don't know. I saw a couple great catches, you know what I'm saying? I would love to be as tough and as caring as Wiley Martin. Every day of his life was a, was a challenge. But he had such a gentle soul about him. And, um, but when he was in that locker room on game day, he was an inspiration. He was trying to inspire you, and you just thought he was one of the guys. Always, always, for God for his life. And there's a handoff, Scotty Phillips right side. Well, why did we worry about it? We knew Scotty Phillips would take it in anyway. Touchdown, Ole Miss. And this is the game, trailing 48-44 with a minute 18 to go. Fires and it's incomplete, crossing route to Allen. He thought he got interfered with, they don't call it. Going to the uh, Oxford Intermediate School, uh, talk about careers. Uh, just try to give them a, uh, a, a really uh, understanding, like how, how important it is to know, like what they want to do later on in life. You know, uh, and it's okay to know what you want to do now. So everybody got dreams, and it's okay to chase your dreams, whatever it may be. What's up, Charlie? What's up? How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Where are you taking us today? We're going right. We're going down to the um, sixth grade insights classroom. Okay. Hello. Hello. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm from Starkville, Mississippi. Uh, born and raised, and um, I played all sports uh, growing up: basketball, football, baseball. You know, I, and I just kind of fell in love with football. Ended up here at Ole Miss, uh, the great university. If you could go back and tell your middle school self something, what would that be? Listen to the teachers, uh, basically, and. Just, just try to be the best you can be every day, even in the classroom. Like, try to excel in the classroom because it pays off. If you're going to be a great football player, you got you also be a great student. Like, be a great person a, a, as well. You know, uh, even the little things. It, it really comes down to the little things. You just, you're doing the right thing all the time. Even when nobody's looking. When nobody's looking, <laughs> do the right thing all the time when nobody's looking. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Third and ten for the Rebels from the 46. Floyd Allen's checked in as receiver. Play action, ready to throw again. Astronomy out route, diving for it, and coming up with it is Allen. Floyd! Ah! Yeah! Yeah, Floyd! But that was a great catch. I saw it when he broke it off. Teammates of Floyd Allen get excited when he has success. And there's a reason for that. The senior from Houston, Texas, has fought through miles of adversity to make it to this point in his life, starting with his senior year in high school. Unfortunately, I didn't have a year that you know, I projected I would have. Uh, I ended up tearing my ACL, which put me in a predicament where you know, my senior year was over. But you know, things happened, and you know, I ended up getting a scholarship offer from uh, Bethany College. And I was you know, blessed to have that opportunity then as you know, time went on and you know, my knee healed, you know, I felt you know I could play at a high level. So I, I set my sights out to you know, do, do, do just that. With the goal of playing at a higher level, Allen returned home to Houston to work and prepare his body for his opportunity. And that's exactly what he did. When the phone call came, he was ready. And he's like, hey, you know, I know you're looking for a place to play with you. You know, like to come out to, you know, Santa Monica College in California. He's like, you know, we don't have scholarships, and, you know, we don't have dorms, but, you know, it's an opportunity to play. So me, me being who I am, you know, I doubled down on my workload, saved up all the money I could, and me and my family, you know, we went out to California. Working at McDonald's to help pay for school, Allen was again asked to change his plans, transferring to El Camino College. 
where his desire to play and succeed was truly tested. I didn't have the funds at the time to get myself a place at El Cam near El Camino College, so I had to just stay in my car for you know a couple weeks to you know get myself you know prepared just to, for the move. The JUCO struggle is real, so you know everybody knows that when you're from an out of state, you know things are hard. So you know they you know find ways you know we find ways to take care of each other. Finally settled in California, Allen looked to showcase his talent to gain attention from bigger schools. But on the first day of fall camp, two fractures in his ankle would derail those plans once more. Months later, in the offseason, Floyd and his teammate would take a road trip to a JUCO camp, and they would do or wear anything to get noticed. We end up uh, driving seven hours down, uh, seven hours up to uh, NorCal, you know, I had me on. I had to make sure I was seen because you know I'm not I'm not the tallest guy in the room, but you know I had to make sure I was seen. So I had me a nice little neon hat on, just you know, make sure everybody could see me. All of a sudden, there was a receiver that showed up that had this neon yellow hat on, and immediately kind of stood out just because of the hat alone. All of a sudden, this kid started running routes, and all of a sudden, you took notice to him. And so every time he kept coming to the front of the line, you kept noticing the neon yellow hat and you kept noticing this kid making plays. I took every rep I could in one-on-ones, and as the camp ended, you know, I'm thanking all the coaches, you know, just for allowing me to be here. Then Coach Pillar comes up to me, he's like, you know, hey, man, we like you a lot. I uh, didn't know all the, the backdrop of, you know, living in the car and, and living with four other guys in one room and things of that nature just to, to make it. But, you know, visited, fell in love with the campus, fell in love with, with the opportunity that we were going to have, and, and luckily for us, we were able to get him as a walk-on, not knowing that he would take the step that he took. And again, I guess you can say the rest is history. Despite all of his setbacks, Floyd had finally made it to the highest level of college football. And when he got to Ole Miss, he took advantage of every second. Hey, let's get it! Here we go, here we go! Be flat, Floyd! Work up, work up, work up. Punch! Good. Get up, get up! It's hard! Hey, no drop. Eyes burst. Keep that ball up. Good. Good, Floyd. Oh! That's six yards! That's a six yard game! Yeah, baby! Good play! Yes, yes, good play! When, when he first came here, you you know, you sit and you talk about each incoming player. And uh, so, we, you know, you discuss his background and his story. and really felt like he was a scholarship player. All I ever heard was, you know, Ole Miss receivers and the best receiving core in the country. So my whole mindset was, you know, hey, man, show, show him why you here. Show him why, you know, Coach Pillar brought you in. He put in all this extra time, and I'd always get those little little pulls and from, I remember DeMarcus Lodge and being like, Coach, this guy deserves a scholarship. He's a good player. Those whispers from the NWO did not fall on deaf ears. Floyd's body of work had left such an impression that the coaching staff would indeed start including Floyd in the scholarship discussion. But a selfless action in the first week of the season would make that decision an easy one. All right, hey, listen up. The first core value of our program is that we're an unselfish team. Floyd Allen, where you at? Come here, Floyd. Come here, Floyd. I, I look at Hey, I look out, I don't even recognize these guys in these numbers. Hey, him and Willie Hibbler were on the same special teams. What's he do? Hey, coach, I want to get on the bus. I don't care what my number is. Change it. Hey, we got two gifts for these guys, but I'm going to let them fight it out for the best one. Winner gets the bag with the surprise inside. Loser gets the shirt. One shot. It, this is one of those moments like everybody's watching like, hey, it's, it's you versus him. You got to compete. You got to win. I'm thinking like, okay, you know, this is a nice bag. But at the same time, I'm thinking like, man, all the NWO behind me like, hey, if I don't win this one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to get on me the whole <laughs> after practice. So in my head, I'm just like, hey, Man, you, you run your best route. I end up catching the ball and I'm just lit just because I'm like, I, I'm not, I forgot about the whole bag situation. I'm just happy like I won for the offense, I won for like the receivers. All right, Floyd, come here. All right, open up that bag and find what's in there. Let's see what's in the bag. Let's see what's in the bag. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What is it, gift certificate? What is it? What? Is it? Read that out. I pull out the bag, I see my name, and I'm reading it, and I read it so fast, and I was like, oh, I'm tripping. Then I look at it again, and everybody just rushes me. Selfish. 
selfish. Yeah. It's about being a family. Hey, hey, because hey, hey, special players can win any game. Right. But a great team can win every, every game. Every, every game. game. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, congratulations. Oh, I love you. Oh, hey, family on three. Family on three. Good hard work, baby. One, two, three. Family. I really felt like, you know, my team knew that, you know, all the hard work I put in and the fact that, you know, they seen it and they were just as excited as I was. It was probably, nah, I can't even say probably, it was really the best moment of my life. Like, it was just amazing. He, I mean, pushed through, I mean, essentially homelessness to being a scholarship receiver in the SEC. I mean, that, that's, that's the true definition of perseverance. I feel like my story, you know, helps others. I feel like my life's purpose has always been to, you know, inspire people. You know, I want to be, I want some kid to, you know, who's going through something right now to see my story and be like, you know what? I'm saying, you know, he came from here and, you know, he's an SEC receiver on scholarship. Now, you know, if he can do it, then I can. You believe in yourself, you believe in God, you know, and you work, you work your tail off. And there's no, there's no ceiling to how far you can go. While College Station braced for a weekend chill, the Rebs look to bring their own kind of heat to Kyle Field. Everybody worry about it. They talking about the cold. And if you ain't worried about no cold, you want me to play. I just don't want to embarrass them, you know? It's just, look at them with all their shirts off. Nobody would care about them if I took my shirt off, you know? I like it. I like the whole receiving core doing it. We got a, we got a D-line doing it. We got Cooley doing it. Everybody's doing it. I might do it. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. That, that, that must be some NWO stuff. Like, I don't know anything about that, though. Hey, hey you need to do it, too. I, hey, yeah, no, I can't be in the cold too. like that. I can't be in the cold like that. <laughs> it's warm up. Not get cold. <laughs> we go get loose. Lock him out. Don't let him in your body. Good. There it is. Hey, it has nothing to do with what they do. It's about us. Coming in on three. One, two, three. Coming in. Let's go. About eight and a half minutes, that bell's gonna ring. Hey, the most important thing that we do is that we answer the bell. That we come out of our corner and we fight. Hey, all I want is all you got. And then we need you to be that elite focus. That zone we're talking about. Hey, because when you're in the zone, you're not worried about the damn crowd. You're not worried about the weather because you're in the zone. And you're so focused on your job and you're so locked in on your job, you're not worried about anything else. You go communicate and you go do your job. The starting quarterback is going to hand it off, flip on a reverse the other way, and tackle for a loss. Good penetration to blow that one up. Featuring two of the thoroughbred offenses across the SEC, each side stood tall defensively out of the gates. Yes, sir! There you go, boy. Has time, now spins away from track and trips and falls at the 33. I don't know if he's upended or just lost his balance there. And Ole Miss will have to punt away on fourth down and 19. Ending the defensive back and forth, the Aggies' seven-minute drive would end with the first points of the game. Davis in motion, fake. Mon's going to try to run. He gets a block, and he takes it in off the right side for the touchdown. So the quarterback himself rushes it in, and the Aggies strike first, leading 6 to nothing. The lengthy and meticulous drive by the Aggies was countered by a quick strike from their guests. Now Woolard goes in motion behind the quarterback to the far side to give you four receivers there. He fakes the toss there, comes back to the near side of the hitch route, caught at the 34, Frankie clear, Lodge down the sidelines of the 20, 15, 10, 5, can he get there? He hits the pylon, did he go out of bounds? They say no, touchdown, Ole Miss. Good job by Tamu that time, looking everybody off, so focused to his left, comes a back round, puts that ball on the money. Swinging his feet, getting those things set, and putting the ball where Lodge can get it. He catches it, rolls to the sideline, and once he gets a step, when, when the guy misses the tackle, he can run away from people. Appreciate that, bro. Hey, hey nice throw. Two. Nice hey. read. Let's go. Hey, I need a stop. I need a stop. I need a stop. Left side, not much there. You're in third down already. Dasher makes the stop. Rebels getting after Mond. He steps up in the pocket, finds Williams out of the backfield. But he will be wrestled down. Sonogo with another huge stop. Yeah, good job inside. It's a hell of a job. The stop by the defense would give the red and blue a chance to take the lead. And yet Phil Longo feels like he's got rhythm. Feels like he's got all of his cards at his disposal, whether it be the RPO game, whether it be the run game with Willard, or just taking shots outside and one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So Ta'abu over the middle in the air, A.J. Brown, another big one through the air. On first and goal, high snap, handle. Ta'abu trying to find the edge, he will walk in, touchdown. Ole Miss 
Rebels on top. Let's go! Let's go! Another defensive stand would place the ball back into the hands of an offense on the move. Jordan Ta'amu winds up, takes a deep shot. It is caught, wow. bubbled, and a terrific grab by Demarcus Lodge. The Texas native shows out here in the Lone Star State with an incredible grab. Ooh, that's a bad man. 40 plus to Lodge, and now Ta'amu, second and two. He wants a football, and the Aggies appear to be on top. And as the Rebels were rolling, Texas A&M grabs the football back. Now can the Aggie offense capitalize? Crossing route, open again, caught at the 45 and tackled at the 50 as Osmond. They breathed a little light. Momentum changed, now they rushed it down and got it to the 21 of Ole Miss. Mon four completions, three of them to Osmond. And now Mon to the end zone, touchdown, Buckley. Aggies in the end zone. What a good half of football. 14-14 score. Head over head, let's go. Let's go regroup. Let's go regroup. Bring it in tight. Hey, hey, four round fight. Four round fight, hey. Now I want your focus to be there. And I want to finish this thing in the fourth quarter. Hey, let's go answer the bell now. Four round fight. Go. One round at a time, let's go. right? Let's go. let's go get the third quarter, and then we'll get the fourth. Hey, we're all we got. We're all we need. We're all we got. We're all we need. Yeah, we all, we all three. One, two, three. Bam. Let's get it. Quarterback draw, Mond off the right side, loses the ball. It's picked up by Ole Miss. Down the sideline to the 20 is Cedric Woods. <laughs> Woods is going to take it all the way in for the touchdown. That man run a 4 3 40. Oh, the forward return, nobody in front of him. Do not catch him. Play action, double fake. He wants to throw. Got a man deep over the middle. Comes to the near side, and pass is going to be picked off by Ole Miss. It was Ken Webster. Oh, no! It's called home field advantage for a reason. And College Station boasts one of the best in the business. Riding the 12th man spirit, the Aggies would make their move to capture momentum and the lead. Bond on third and eight, Sternberger hauls it in. Huge grab by the tight end to take the Aggies inside the 20. Back to throw, let's throw a route to the right corner of the end zone, touchdown. Courtney Davis over the shoulder grab over Kedron Smith and the Aggies are a PAT away from tying it. Kellen Mond, Sternberger. A laser from Mond to Jace Sternberger. It's third down nine, not real good field goal position. From the 34, Mond trying to throw. Now he's going to take off and run, and he's going to be hit and dropped, and he'll be short of the first down after a six-yard pickup. They're going to send out the field goal unit, so a 46-yard effort. There's the kick, and it is good. Seth Small puts the Aggies on top, 24-21. The field goal would complete the Aggie comeback and give them the lead early in the fourth quarter. Play action pass over the middle. Got his man. Caught it's Cooley. Cooley racing down the center of the field. He's all the way down to the Aggies 33 before he's wrestled down. 34 yards to the 32. What a start. Big catch by Cooley, the tight end. 19 yards to the 13. Now left side, Pellerin, who's actually playing quarterback. And from the 13, he'll get to the 10, a three-yard gain. Second down seven here. 22-yarder from Logan. Brown is the holder. The 22-yarder is no good. And the Aggies hang on to the lead. The miss would give the ball back to an Aggie offense eager to distance themselves from the visiting Rebels. Snowby. Play action, swing it out to the near side to Sternberger. Sternberger breaks a tackle of 20 to the sidelines of 30, angles back to the 35 and pulled down at the 41. Aggies threatening to make it tough on the Rebels. They get a TD out of this, looks to throw in the end zone, wide open and caught. Getting the left foot in there in the back of the end zone, right under the goal post. It is at a premium now with 436, three timeouts. Rebels going to have to do it in a hurry. The snap back to Jordan. Dancing around, runs to his left, fires down the far side. He's got A.J. Brown who hauls it in for a catch one-on-one. 14-yard -on -one. line, a 24-yard effort for Luke Logan. And that kick is good. The field goal would cut the lead to seven but the onside kick recovery by the Aggies would seal the fate for the Rebels. It is an onside kick, and the Aggies have it at the 46-yard line. But Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies with a 38-24 win over Ole Miss.
hey, we're in this together. No matter what. This group right here, we're in it together. Just hang together and keep fighting. I don't, I don't, I don't have the words. You fought and you gave yourself a chance to win. We didn't make the plays, they did. But we have, we have to stay together. We have 12 days left. 12, we have 12 days left and two games. And we got a decision to make. And we're gonna make the right decision. Mama didn't raise no quitter. You understand that? So you get your mind right. You get your mind right and let's come back and let's finish this thing the right way together. Y'all stick together, lean on each other. Lean on each other because we're in this thing together no matter what. No matter what, stand back to back and let's go finish this thing red the right way. Let's go finish it the right way. All right, we got, uh, we got a Saturday game and then a Thursday game. So you got 12 days, man. Let's go lay it on the line and finish it together. All right? All right. Family on three. One, two, three, family. Bam. We didn't execute on third down and uh... You know, that's, that's, that kept us out of some opportunities, and uh, you know, we just need to finish some drives. Yeah, disappointing loss. Um, felt like the defense really played their guts out in the first half, gave us an opportunity to win. Um, credit Texas A&M. They, they controlled the second half, um, especially the third quarter uh, in particular. They were able to hold on to the ball, um, and we just we couldn't get to a rhythm offensively. But. Uh, Give those guys credit. We got to find a way to win. We're in the win business, and regardless of the circumstances, whether it's injuries, whether it's state, we have to find a way to win. That's what we signed up for, and that's what we have to get done. When you go through all the stuff that we've been through with, with this team and this family, I don't think anything else can can knock us down. I mean, we're going to be mad about it today and get over tomorrow, fix the little things. But this family, uh, it's, it's unbreakable. Can't, can't anything take us down. We've been through a lot and we're going to keep getting back up every time.